Welcome back. This is Mike again. And uh, for this video, before we really dive too deep into Mari, I kind of wanted to go over uh, some of the projection settings and also the, the bake behavior. Now, if you're previously used, uh, let's say Photoshop or body paint or Mudbox or whatever, um, generally when you texture, you know, you're actually texturing directly on the model. But the great thing about Mari is you're able to actually adjust the textures or the color you know, or the contrast or whatever prior to actually baking that down. So let me go ahead and uh, show you what I'm talking about here. P for the basic paint tool and I will adjust my radius and there you go. So let's say that's close to, to what you know, the areas that you want green, but it's not perfect. Well, let's go ahead and get this uh, warp tool out and you can adjust it to basically, you know, whatever works, you know, works for the, the particular model or textures. You know, you can do this on an image map, on just regular paint strokes, on an emblem, pretty much whatever you, you know, you're, you're looking to do with it. It offers the flexibility prior to actually committing to baking down the paint. So let's hit B to bake. And after it's baked down, as you see, what I adjusted or how I adjusted it is baked down into the paint. So let's uh, move on to the projection settings. Now, you do have an option to actually disable the masking. Uh, you can change the masking preview color. So we'll go ahead and enable the uh, preview. Also, um, you have your painting mode, your opacity, projection filter, these three options for bake behavior. So first off, let's go ahead and show you what manual does. And I will switch sides here and stick with the green color. Hit P to paint. And let's say you just wanted this portion green. All you have to do in the manual option is you will physically have to hit the B button to bake it down. Also, you will have to manually clear your paint buffer. As you see that that paint stroke is still within Mari's paint buffer. In order to clear that, all you have to do is hit this button here. So that would be useful on stamps or you know a whole bunch of uh, different things. Next option is clear only. Now what clear only is going to do is you can do your stroke texture or whatever bake it down and what it's actually going to do is it's actually just going to um you're going to manually still have to bake it down but it will automatically clear your paint buffer for you now the one i generally use most of the time just a, a matter of convenience for me is an auto bake and clear so let me go ahead and show you that one hit p to paint And now I can still adjust this, you know, as, as the other two options, but as soon as I move the model, it's going to automatically clear the paint buffer and I'll automatically bake the paint, uh, bake the texture down. So, like I said, you got three options. Um, you know, it's a lot of it's personal preference or basically whatever you're working on. Um, let's go ahead and move on to the projection settings. Now you have front excuse me front projections or you have through now obviously front is going to um oops let me hit the p to paint front is just actually going to uh enable you to texture actually what you're looking at here if you go to through it will actually let you make everybody green now it'll actually uh let you just flood fill it while wow, that is a green color, it'll actually, you know, go completely through the model. It does come in handy. Like I said, you do have that option there. Um, you have projection on, you have all or selected only. So if you have a particular selection um, that you want just the texture to go on, you can use that option as well. One of my favorite things here, we're going to move down to the edge masking. So as you turn it on, don't look like anything's happening. 
you're actually going to have to adjust the fall off start and end. Most of the time I keep it anywhere from 60 to 80 for the most part that uh, that works. Let me go ahead and show you. And basically everything with that red color will not get textures applied. Oh, I still have my uh, thing set to through. And let's try that again. So as you see, worked perfect. You know, it does have some artifacts, which is really not a big deal. All you have to do is just go back and adjust it. You know, and it really depends on what you're working on, whether it's an organic model or hard service. But it is adjustable, and it works perfect when you get it to that point. See, like, I can see the, the red there. Yep, perfect. Okay, now... Next one I want to go to is a channel mask. If you have a particular channel that you've created that you want to mask out certain areas or, you know, whether it's a noise or, you know, pretty much whatever, all you have to do is load that mask and then you can adjust the mask amount, contrast, and you also can adjust the curve and invert it. Next thing is going to be your AO mask. Now, in order to utilize the AO mask, you'll have to actually go to objects. And then you'll have to actually bake down your AO mask. But you can use that just like a channel mask. Um, you can invert it. You can adjust your mask amount, mask contrast, and the mask curve. Now, the next one is going to be depth mask. Now, with that, I will kind of show you. And as you see, it is just reacting on the depth of uh, your viewport. You can adjust this. And you can also use several of these masking options together. Because as you see, I still have my edge masking enabled, which it will work. Perfect. So that will come in handy if you have like uh, recessed areas and, you know, uncertain models. Let me go ahead and go into the next one. Now, back face mask. Most of the time I leave this enabled because um, if you have a model with holes in it and you're just texturing over the holes, it would, if you don't have it enabled, you might have textures actually, uh, you know, being created on the other side. So that does come in handy. Um, the last mask option is going to be your, let me shut these others off, this is going to be your uh, fractal noise mask. Now this would come in handy for, uh, you know, just breaking up areas, uh, looking for a little bit more organic uh, textures. And uh, like I said, that red color is not going to have your, uh, not going to have textures applied to it. You can invert it. You know, you can adjust the mask curve. I mean, you can do numerous things with it. Okay. So I think that wraps up uh the projection palette uh portion of it and um let's move on to one more before i uh take a break and clean things up to, and then we'll move on to the other palettes is going to be your uh painting palette now you have uh options for different filtering you also have your source grade options but the main area i wanted to talk about um is going to be your paint buffer you have your uh, paint, your color depth, which is going to be 8, 16, and 32-bit. But also you have your buffer size. Now, for the most part, rule of thumb is if you're working on a 2K map, try to keep this at 2K, 4K, and so on. Um, you have options all the way from 256 all the way up to 1634. So keep that in mind. That is under the painting palette. Um, you can transform it and then reset and then also reset on bake you know, enabled or disabled. 